Prophet Muhammad, he said, Al Hirbu Khitun is a worry strategy, and strategy demands that you use the weapons of your enemy. Justice. And this is the primer for that bomb. This is the primer. I'll just finish writing it. I'll have to publish this by tens of thousands. Print it. It's not printed yet, it's just type. This is actually the primer to prime that scud. How to use that scud against a Christian. Three hours' time, I set you on the road. Then you become your own. You, you, you have that AK-47, how to shoot the scud missiles. Man, then you'll be itching for Christians to come to your house. This is not for ordinary Christians. They are your friends, your fellow workers, your boss, your employer. Talk to them nicely. I'll show you how to talk to them, Christ and Islam. Talk about that. What the Bible says about Muhammad, talk about that. Muhammad, the natural successor to Christ, talk about that. Muhammad, the greatest, talk about that. This is special. It will be out of bound for the ladies, not for the ladies. Only for men, and I prefer young men under 30, but everybody says he's young, so I can't help it. Sheikh, <laughs> Sheikh Zahran says, you know, I'm young in spirit, I can't refuse, but I would prefer, you know, 30 years and under. People who have the guts and stamina to do the job. So that will be the next move, inshallah. This, 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 don't, don't look at this. This is that little stone Dawud al Islam picked up. That's a little stone Dawud al Islam picked up. Go and crack the skull of the Jalut and pleasantly, man. Nobody will hurt you. Wallah, nobody will hurt you. Nobody will touch you. Nobody will punch you. With that, nobody will. Is that smile on your face? Good morning, madam. Good afternoon, sir. Good morning, sir. Happy Christmas. Happy New Year. Wa akhirud da'wana. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for the doctor, a very stimulating lecture. And I'm sure it's woken up all of us Muslims to know that we have a big responsibility on our shoulders to share the doubt enlightenment for us. Now is the chance for you to put questions to share the doubt. Please make a cue at this microphone here, and there's a few brief rules that we can follow. Questions will only relate to the topic theme. As you can see, Chef Vidal is quite old now, although he says he's very fit, but I know he's been traveling, he's tired. So please limit your questions to the title of the topic only. Ask one question at a time. If you have more than one question, ask your first question and go back to the end of the queue. Please, can we have the first question? If the ladies have any questions, they're welcome to write it down and pass them through. Can we have the gents form the queue before we start questions, please? Is, is the mic working? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Right. Assalamu alaikum. Well, well. I want to ask you about the situation in Bosnia. How is the situation among the Islam? This is my question. Brother, I must confess. I'm also wanting somebody to explain to me the Serbians, the Bosnians, and the Yugoslavians, what is involved there. Wallah, I myself, I haven't got a clear picture of what is happening there. Who's fighting who, we keep on reading about the Muslims there, but which part are Muslims and the Croats and what, I have no real knowledge. I'll be just guessing, shooting, and I'll make a fool of myself. I, this is not my speciality. We all should know, but I have got no knowledge on the problem that you have asked. Uh, I would like to tell you that there are many Christians who know about Islam. They know that the Quran is the last revelation. They know that Muhammad وسلم, is the last prophet. They know that Islam is the truth. Yet, they don't want to admit it. They don't want to believe it. Can you tell us please what are the reasons that which makes them be far from reading Islam and knowing it better. Jazakumullah khair. The brother wants to know, you see there are people, there are people, they say that Islam is a good religion, the Prophet ﷺ was a good man, sincere man, the Quran is a fantastic book, Islam's teachings are very good, very helpful, and yet they will not accept Islam. What could be the reason? You see, it's a matter of programming, brainwashing. The Christian and the Jew, they're both programmed. They are programmed to think that they're going to go to heaven. The Jews, God chose them. They're a chosen people, and I said, they are the children of God. All these others are like his step, God's stepchildren. 
So now my, my son is a rotter. My son is a rotter. You are a saint. But who will get my inheritance? My son, not you. I like you. Very good boy. Pray five times a day. Tahajjud Guzar, we say. He's a perfect Muslim. But who will get my inheritance? The rotter son of mine. Am I right? He's my son, my flesh and blood. He's going to get my inheritance. So similarly, the Jews are thinking. They are the children of God. And as such, no mind what daughters they are, but they will go to heaven. The Christian also the same. They are programmed that no mind what, how beastly they are, they're going to go to heaven. And Allah tells us that in the Holy Quran, Sawaqalu, and they say, Lan yadkhula al jannata illa man kana hudan al nasara. That you Muslims will never, never enter Jannah. There's no heaven for you unless you become a Jew or unless you become a Christian. That's programming. Once you are programmed, the guy admits you are a good person, your way of life is good, everything, but you haven't got salvation. There's no heaven for you. So this is the problem. Now you have to find out, you have to deal with that sickness, which we are not dealing. So on the face of it, I'm telling you, man, we say don't touch alcohol. Look at your father is a drunkard, your brother-in-law is a drunkard, and your son-in-law is a drunkard. Look at the mess, misery all around. See, yeah, see, yeah, it's true. But you got no salvation. There's no heaven for you. Right? That, so that gives him satisfaction. Now how to deal with that? In other words, that is a different type of brainwashing. That guy is brainwashed, you have to reprogram him. He's programmed, you have to reprogram him. Now you need the right material for that. And you need patience and perseverance for that. It's not like one sitting, I make the guy speechless. You know, I made dreams around him. And I'm satisfied, I'm happy. You know, Christian fellow came and I silenced him. That's not it, man. It doesn't, should. Anytime any Christian comes to your door, make him welcome. Sit down. What's your name, please? Your address? Your telephone number? He doesn't want to? Says, gone foot sack. Get out, you bloody rubbish. You want to come into my house? You want to enjoy my hospitality? And you, are, you are, don't want to give me your name, your address? I don't want to know you. Get out. Push him out. Once you have got his name and address and his telephone number, now talk. And you might have made a crack in his egg. Now what do you do? You satisfy? No, 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 no. Go and follow him up. You go to his house now. Go and pester the life out of him. Because if he made a crack in you, he'll never let you go until you're converted. Do you know that? Until you're baptized. Damn it all, why should you be just satisfied with just making a crack? No, no, no. It must be a complete change. Until one day he tells you, say, I don't want you to darken my door again. The next time you come here, I'll put a bullet through you. <laughs> then you say, as Allah tells us in the Quran, When you meet the ignorant, then you say peace. But otherwise, you make his life miserable. He wanted to make it to you. Take his name and address down, his telephone number down. Now talk. And follow it up. Okay, so we have to persevere. It's not just a lifetime of programming. In one hour you think, why didn't you do the job? He, you know, I tied him up, I tied him up, I tied him up. Why doesn't he accept Islam? No, it's not that easy. Lifetime of programming. You have to persevere longer. Yes, my son. Uh, I want to make three points to you, brother. First of all, uh, my point is... Uh, Put, said, speak in the mic, yeah. Speak in the mic, speak in the mic, yes. You said that the... Uh, Huh? That's not a PA system, Michael. I see, I see. But if he speaks in the yes. That we should learn from the masters, the kafirs. First of all, they're not masters, they're evil minded. And we don't need to learn from the enemy, we have the Quran. We don't need. You know, this I, when I tell you in the class, I'll describe this in the language befitting. This book here. I can't use the language here now. Right? Why the hell must we use this? When we have got the Quran? But I said, look, that's what Allah tells you. So the reason why you are not doing the job, why you can't do the job, we haven't done the job, is because you don't know what, any, what weapon the enemy is carrying. Every time we get a beating in the Middle East from the Jews, you know why? Because we don't know what he's armed with. He's better armed than us. The American is better armed, better informed than us. That's all. He's not a superman. He didn't come from heaven. So to fight the enemy, you must know his weapons. And Allah is telling you, the ayah I quoted you, وَقَالُوا لَنْ يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةَ إِلَّا مَنْ كَانَ هُدًا أَوْ نَصَارًا They say, 
that you Muslims will never, never enter Jannah. There's no heaven for you.